Hi everybody. So as you can see, this denon is spinning absolutely out of control. Here's the bottom of the turntable. Just comes off with a few screws, all Phillips head. And you might be kind of daunted when you look at this at first because it's kind of a big board um, for sort of a simple turntable, you know? But in reality, this is actually a very simple laid out circuit. The main issue that I had, as you saw, was Platter was spinning like crazy. It looked like a UFO was about to, you know, take off. And of course, the first thing that I did, deox it. And I threw some right on the volume pot potentiometer right there. I sprayed a, you know, probably three, four times, worked it in real good, no luck. Then I located the speed pots. Tried the same thing, hit it with deox it, spin it around, no good. So it was definitely going to be more than just a simple little tweak. I also messed with these potentiometers with a screwdriver you know, try to get the right speed. You just go in here and they and they move. I'm not gonna touch it because I got it really good right now. But of course that didn't work either. All you have to do is go through with your multimeter and unsolder every capacitor that you see in black. Um, do this one by one, go slow and take your time. You just take a capacitor out one by one, test it, and if it's good, put it back. And if it's no good, replace it. And when you change it out, you have to realize that you're gonna have to go through a lot of these capacitors. You can't just like replace one and then try it. If you're gonna, you know, if you're gonna do it, just do it. Just go through every single capacitor and change it out. So although once I did recap one, two, three, four, five capacitors, they were dead. The turntable was still spinning too fast. It was spinning out of control. It was a little better. It wasn't spinning like so fast that I couldn't like you know, that. I was scared it was gonna fly off, but it was still spinning extremely fast. And that's when. I saw a forum entry by this dude, a legend. He has three posts since like 2011 or whatever. And he mentioned that the voltage regulator transistor was a problem that he was having trouble with. So I'm gonna show you how to replace that right now. Now here's the original part and here's the brand new replacement. And there's the heat sink. So it goes on like that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is try to get this original compound off and I'll put new this is just thermal compound, like you would use on a CPU. And I'll put that new stuff on after I take this off. Now there does seem to be a thermal pad right here, and that, that's not something that I want to remove. I'm just trying to remove a little bit of the excess paste so the new stuff can work. Now with the old paste a little bit more managed, here's the new part. I'm just gonna apply a tiny drop, just a bead of thermal compound I'm not going to spread it at all. I'm just going to put the bead and kind of do like you would on a on a CPU. And then I'll just take the, here's the original screw. You can tell because it's all covered in the white silicone that they would use. All right. And I'll just place this in and install it. That's what it looks like in the original heat sink with the replacement C2023 part. See there's some wiggle in there. And I'll straighten out the screw. I'll just get it better seated. but. That's the general idea. And there's the new part put in. Uh, the screws are affixed. And yeah, you can see some of the old, I'm sorry, some of the new um, thermal compound coming out, but that's good. I'm gonna make sure that these solder joints are full. There's no holes. Um, I did clean this up with some alcohol. That's why there's this white glare. There are the solder joints. Looks pretty good. I didn't even have to trim the leads. So now with this transistor replaced, I went through and just replaced a bunch of capacitors that weren't reading right. And that's very simple to do because all you have to do for that is take out a capacitor and set your multimeter. So for instance, this one is rated at uh, 470 microfarad. And so what's closest to 470? So you gotta set it to 2000 and then you just test it. If it's within range, you stole it and you stole it back. <laughs> I did about a 10% tolerance. So if it's within that 10%, I'll install it back. And if it's not, I just replace it. I just bought a whole pack for $20. This multimeter is $20 easily. A great purchase. I've had this and the transistor pack I'll definitely use more in the future. That's all you had to do. And as I'll show you in a few minutes, it works great. Now I just did a few general maintenance things after that. After I installed this and replaced all the capacitors that were that were bad, I, I went and verified that everything is working. Now I flipped it back over on its side. So a few things that you're gonna have to do one is adjust the speed using these two trimmers here. 
you'll be able to easily do that from under and you just look at the strobe lights when you're playing at the corresponding speed. The next was very simple. Any pivot point, I just threw a bit of lubricant here. So this one right there, that one, that one, uh, the arm lifter, there's a spot there, uh, the bearings for the tone arm, easy. Using the same oil that I use for the center spindle. I actually made a separate video for the center spindle. It's like, it's a, it's a quick video. It's really simple to lubricate that, very serviceable. And then I went through with my screwdriver and I just tightened every screw that you can see uh, along the front panel, uh, definitely the motor assembly, circuit board, all these pieces that hold in, you know, uh, every every part that moves, like this part was wiggling a lot. So any movement I tried to mitigate. I then did add a little bit of solder to these leads here because I was kind of unpleased on how these were finished. There's just, there was just like a little bit of, of uh, bare copper exposed. So I filled that up with solder. Another little tweak that I kind of just thought of right now, you could take a pair of needle nose pliers and cut this zip tie. If you did not want the power supply wires in this, you know, in close proximity to the motor wires, right? So I'll just, I just spun this wire up a little bit and I'll plug it back in. So those, those wires that control the motor are completely isolated. And these two, which one's for the strobe and one's for power, that we can actually zip tie to itself. And the motor cable is now completely isolated. And these are the wires for the motor that usually go right here near the tone arm wires. So I'll isolate them as well. And I can just zip tie them to all these wires that are for the speed control and things like that. Probably be smart to run it under here. Then plug it in. And then if I zip tie it, it's completely unobtrusive. So we've isolated the motor wires from the power. And we've isolated the transformer from the tone arm power wires. Okay. And make sure that the top cover will still be able to go on. Almost forgot to mention this little AC cord cover that goes over the screw hole right here. Don't forget that. Okay. Now we're ready to install the cover. <laughs> the last thing you probably want to do is this sensor head right here. Um, you want to make sure that that's correctly spaced. And so all I did was grab a piece of cardstock, it's a little thicker than paper, and slot that in between there and loosen these screws, push this head firmly up against this piece of paper that's between the platter and screw those screws back in. Now, if you never touched this sense head, don't touch it now. Uh, that's just, if you touched it before, that's how you can realign it. Turn it on, it's not spinning, not doing anything crazy. Hit 33, speed is dead on. A little hard to spot, but that bottom line is the 33 speed and then I'll kick it to 45 and that's the top speed. I'll now demo the turntable for you as well. Here's the turntable all set up. Real quick, I installed a, uh, a ground spade connector, which is very simple. I crimped it and soldered it just so it'll last. And so we'll power it on. Speed is dead on, by the way, I double checked it and just used the uh, a screwdriver to adjust everything, uh, the speed with the potentiometers on the board. And so when you set the tone arm over the record, it doesn't actually play. But when you hit the speed, it gently lowers the arm, which I think is really slick. Then you hit stop, raises the arm, turns everything off, as you can tell. And then the auto stop is actually just an auto automatic arm lift, uh, which works great. So it just lifts it up and turns the motor off, as you can tell. You can see the bottom strobe is dead on. And then when I hit 45, speed jumps very fast to 45. And obviously you can use the trimmer to adjust accordingly. So it works great. I'm honestly really impressed with this turntable's design and uh, I really think it'll be reliable and hold up in the future. This weight is very heavy, which is awesome. And yeah, I think this turned out really nicely. And in the future, if anything does go bad, all you have to do is basically change out any other capacitors. And when you buy it from certain sellers, they might send you two transistors. So anything that goes wrong, you can pretty much fix. All the parts are readily available. If you guys like this video, please let me know. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments and I'll definitely get back to you. And yeah, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.